So we are here at Blue Moon Comics shooting Anorax, the Halloween edition. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, Blake Ross is not at the table, but he is still here ah. with hair that looks like the strawberry milk I drank this morning. Um, also joining me at the table today is Mr. Jareth Love. How you Hello. doing, Jareth? And okay. we have somebody new today, our good friend Josh Richards. Sounds like you, you forgot my name. I, I think I did. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so, Great start. Uh, well, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to be talking about some of our favorite uh, movies to watch around Halloween time. Uh, that's mostly what we're going to be talking about. But I do want to bring something up today. Uh, I know that there are some people out there that watch this show every week. And they do not hit that subscribe button. <laughs> hit that subscribe button. You assholes. If you want us to keep making content every week, you got to make sure that you keep, that you do hit that and subscribe button. And hit that bell. Uh, and you will be notified. Uh, so make sure you're doing that. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so like I said, we're just going to be talking about some of our favorite movies to watch around Halloween time. And, uh, before you know it, we're going to be talking about some of our favorite holiday movies to be watching. It's getting cold out. Did you know that, Jared? No, I couldn't tell. Yeah, you, really? Yeah, you can't wait for the kids to come to the mall and sit on your lap. All right, oh. so, uh, we're going to be... Talking about, you like that, Blake? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, got to say, I did just watch Mandy. And uh, that's definitely going on my list uh, yeah. as a film to watch around Halloween time. You liked it too, right? Oh, you're asking me? I'm asking you. You're me. asking me. Talk I'm to asking me. you, Josh. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, no, Mandy, um, I don't know if I call it a Halloween film. Really? But... I'd recommend it because it's visually really appealing. I want to watch his other movie, Under the Black Rainbow. It's his first film. It's on Shudder. Yeah. You don't have Shudder yet? Buy Shudder. Four ninety nine a month. Unlimited horror movies. We're not sponsored, but my God, do I love it. Um, <laughs> but no, Mandy, I wouldn't really call it a Halloween film. It didn't get, really give me the Halloween spirit, but I would not be mad at someone for watching during Halloween. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's just so fucking dark. It, it's a very dark movie, but... It wasn't really even a horror film, though. What the hell? So, Nicolas Cage plays a character oh, named Red. That movie, yeah. yeah. And he's just like your average every. It, basically, if David Lynch made John Wick. Huh. Very simplistic. Honestly. Very yeah. simplistic plot. Yeah. Beautiful visuals. Probably because half, half the movie is just shot, scenery, little dialogue, and then the other half is just nonstop violence. Mm. It's like you sit through one hour of this kind of really slow paced. And then just straight to the end of nothing but him killing people. Hmm. That's yeah. fantastic. Some of the some of the action in that movie though, um, is so original. Like I didn't see it coming. And just the things that Nicolas Cage, because he's so devastated. I bought him more than John is Wick it, is it because his, the things. Uh, redemption movie, maybe. It's not even redemption. It's revenge. No, no. You know how Cage is just. Oh, Cage is oh, a like redemption during... movie. Yes. So I found out they let him improv most of that movie. Yeah. You notice there's scenes where he's, like, freaking out that the camera's moving back and forth weirdly because the director didn't know what he's about to do next. And at one point, he thought he was going to throw something at the camera, so he moved it back. That's why you see a very sudden jerk. Really? Which actually kind of added, like, a raw indie feel to it that I really liked. Hmm. And to answer Jared's question, though, yeah, I, this redeemed Nicolas Cage for myself. Uh, I think this is his best performance of, like, like ever. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I know that some people will disagree. Uh, I think that you should probably rewatch the movie then if you disagree with that because honestly I don't know how to explain it he just like he gives it all he immerses himself in this role Nicholas, more than he ever has Nicholas Cage isn't a bad actor you give him the right role he works right for like you know Bruce Campbell yeah he's Ash he's mm -hmm. always going to be the the macho man type character but I never see Bruce in a dramatic role no it doesn't work doesn't mean he's a bad actor. But if you give them the right roles, they work right to it. So I would say Nicolas Cage is a great B actor. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I wouldn't say he's bad. In this movie, he definitely showed his shops. We'll have to check it out. Yeah, no, highly recommend it. Maybe we'll movie night and I'm going to buy it Tuesday. So You know that, like, red, like, cinematography, that, like, pinkish red cinematography almost kind of reminds me of? Hmm. Blake's hair. <laughs> I was going to say Suspiria, but that's fine, too. Blake, come show everybody your hair real quick. Please. Blake, come on. Come on. Come, come on. on. Come, come, come on. show everybody your hair. 
Look at it. It looks like strawberry shortcake. It's fantastic. I think uh, uh, Harrison Wells is going to love that. <laughs> Little cotton candy fuck. <laughs> That'll be too nice. Yeah. Yeah. Twig boy. There you go. <laughs> I really suspect Wells doesn't even watch the show. He just comments. <laughs> How would you describe our show, Anorax on Air? Uh, Somebody asked me the other day. I, I said all encompassing nerd, but I then keep sometimes on saying like, it's a mix of movies, comic books, and video games. Movies, comic books, video games. We haven't talked much about video games yet, though. Yeah. I always say it's from you know we go from movies to comic books to video games to Jared's love for bird feeding. You know we do we do it all. We really do, and uh, so. Everybody who's watching today, make sure you're tuning in every week because, by golly, we will cover it. All right. So, uh... Did you hear Bill Cosby? Yeah. No. He, he's got a fee, yeah. I found out. So, I forgot what it was. Oh, no. We need that. He probably doesn't want to say the fee out loud, either. Well, well you're not even that good of an impression. Are we talking about It the was the first though? time he did it. The second time I heard it, it was like, you were slacking, but I think you were slacking on purpose. If I was paying you, you to get do me it, in the mood, probably. Wait, but we, you've we already told you already told the audience about the contest, right? Which contest? Oh, the one that if you subscribe or and you know click the bell and all that, we'll notify them, and Jareth will show up and do a free children's birthday party. Oh no, I did not. Oh, you probably informed that. that. Yeah, yeah, probably. I thought Jareth would want to plug. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jareth. <laughs> so let's move on to some more Halloween movies. Uh. So one of the ones that I feel like people always miss is um, Night of the Creeps. Um, actually, two. I meant to say two people always miss is Night of the Creeps um, and Monster Squad. Uh, two great Fred That was on Decker. my list, Monster yeah. Squad. Two great Fred Decker movies. And I think they're the only two movies he's ever directed, honestly. I, I need he to look into that again. He co-wrote The New Predator, right? Shane Black did. I thought... Didn't he co-write it with him? Did Fred Decker do it? Yeah, I think he co-wrote it. Oh, also. really? Because I, I mean, Shane Black helped co uh, co-write the uh, Monster Squad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But Night of the Creeps is, if you like Tom Atkins, which most uh, horror fans know who Tom Atkins is, he shows up in, uh, you know, Maniac Cop, Halloween 3, uh, Night of the Creeps, I can name many others. Uh, uh, Creep Show. Creep Show. Yeah, he's just, he's everywhere. And to me, like, Night of the creeps was just his best role he's like this because neither creeps is it's a very b movie but it's very aware that it's a b movie mm -hmm. and tom atkins especially is very aware that it's a b movie and it creates pretty good humor but he's also such a badass in night of the creeps that it's just fantastic and then with monster squad it's like the Avengers for all the Universal Monsters. Yeah. It's fucking fantastic. So what I usually do around Halloween time is I do Universal Monsters Night. I like yeah. get people come up because it's only like an hour long. Oof, yeah. And so you, you just watch, you know, a few of them, and then you throw a Monster Squad to kind of tie up the night. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love, I love Monster Squad. That movie is the love letter to the Universal Monsters and kind of like the definitive thing, unlike Dark Universe. Yeah, but from is the Monsters thing, thing. Dark Universe? Universe? Um... It dies, it comes back to life, and it dies. I think it's officially dead, dead? After the third attack. After the mummy? Oh, yeah, they did do another mummy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's now dead after that. I mean, but, like, just going from, I mean, uh, Monster Squad, it's a really good way to segue into uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frank Frankenstein. Oh, that's a good And I'll tell you why. Movie. If Monster Squad is the, like, Avengers for the Universal Monsters, Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein is, like, the Captain America Civil War. Uh, for the the Universal Monster universe, uh, because and the the best part about Abbott Costello is you get all the original actors, yeah. you know, that played the Universal Monsters, you know, and that and that really really works. You ever seen Monster Brawl? That sounds so familiar. I think it I th it was Magnet. Magnet did it. Um, but no, I'm thinking of an S game. I think. Uh, okay, it's so stupid, but so so much fucking fun. It's basically a wrestling match, <laughs> monsters. And it's shot like a I real wrestling match. Have you guys seen John Dies at the End? Uh, yeah, uh, that one I didn't see. I read the book as well. Oh, no, the, another that, magnet film. That's I a, didn't see you it. gotta see that. It's a great Halloween movie. Yeah, like hilarious. Yeah, you can even really follow it though. It's just everywhere. You kind of was not really a big fan of the book. Really, you weren't. Yeah. Did you watch the movie? Yeah, I saw the movie. Did you like the movie? Um, so, so it was weird. I'm not a big fan of the book. The book made saying made the movie make more sense. Uh -huh. Because it the book had more time to develop right. the soy sauce right. and all that, 
But as a movie, it was fine. It was all right. But as a book, like, there's things in there. I'm like, ah, this really kills the pacing for me. Part one I liked of the book. Uh-huh. Part two, I was like, eh, this is getting ridiculous. I feel like if you rewatch the movie, though, you get a better feel for it every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll try to. I, I've only seen it <laughs> once, but... <laughs> I wanted to though, because I was like, still, right when that came out, Magnet was starting to become a pretty. It, it's on Hulu something. right now. It's not, it's not on Netflix. That's so I nice. think Shutter it was has on it. The poster wall. Okay, Shutter has it too. Yeah, uh, Shutter, uh, four ninety nine a month for non endorsed. <sighs> but my God, do I love it! Yeah, bring back Joe Bob Riggs. By the way, I wanted to mention something about Magnet. What what did I say? Magnet. Mm- Mandy. Mandy. I meant to say Mandy. Thank you, Josh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, if you're gonna watch this movie, honestly, get that Blu-ray. Um, you you want that full HD with this movie because it's just one of those. You know? And make sure you're in the right mindset. Because I went and go, You think oh, so? Because, I mean, that first half is slow. It could be different, but, I mean, it, it might be different for me. It's just the kind of movie I like. Not necessarily saying? slow movies, but I like uh, atmospheric. And, uh, you know, I do like a good horror film that takes its time. Because I've watched, don't really get that. I've watched this movie with multiple people, and I can tell the people in the room that are hating it and love it. Versus, and then, but once you get over that hour hump, then they love the movie. Yeah. So that's why it's like, eh, make sure you're in the right mindset for it. You're, it's a more of a thinking movie because a lot of visuals, symbolism kind of tells the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, second time you watch it, it's a different movie, by the way. I don't know if you watched it twice yet. I only watched it once. Once, yeah. Well, I will watch it, it a second time. Yeah, second time you watch it, different story. I caught a little bit more. And the second one just got announced two days ago. Yeah, I heard about that. That's pretty cool, too. Um, by the way, uh, we're going to bring up movie news. You know, John Krasinski is writing the second Quiet Place movie, from what I understand. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's he says, cool. did, he, did he say it's done or he started? I think he started. Started. Yeah. But I'm happy about yeah, that. Because yeah. my whole thing with The Quiet Place too, it's like, I will see it, but Krasinski has to be on board. Otherwise, I'm not. What do you think they would do for the second movie? Uh, they could do, I think, one of two things. They can continue the same family if they wanted to. Um, but... I think that they will probably just focus on a different family, but I think somehow it will tie into the same family at the toward the end. Of the I want them to do more with the weaponized hearing aid at the end. Yeah, that, that's why I, I do. Personally, I want to. My preference is to see that same family again because, yeah. I mean, can you just imagine a movie of Emily Blunt out there with a shotgun just <laughs> shooting these motherfuckers and, just, while the daughter's like, eh. they just Evil Dead to it. It just picks up right where the first one left off. Like the Evil Dead to it? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I but want. But it's like literally picks it up because... It's here, doable. Here's how you do the plot. So they have the weaponized hearing aid, right? <laughs> They're going to go find some tornado siren because that'll freak, oh, yeah, yeah. put a frequency out. There you go. I'll be, them getting to that. It writes itself. I'll be pissed off if John Krasinski's character, like, they do something where they find out he's still alive. I would be really I, uh, pissed off. No. Because it would I totally want, destroy yeah, that payoff of his dead. death. Yeah. He, that death had some great payoff at the end because it, it really packed an emotional I hate it when a character's death has meaning and they just bring him back immediately. They do that sometimes. Uh, you know what really sucked? Speaking of Halloween movies, Maniac Cop 2. I've never seen the Maniac Cop movies. The first Maniac Cop is amazing. You, you should see it. Uh, Bruce Campbell is actually... I'm not saying he's a bad actor ever. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's hes had movies that are bad, but it's actually a really well-structured movie. And Bruce Campbell plays a different kind of role for Bruce Campbell. And he's actually... He's not, like, funny. He's, like, the very serious guy. He's more like uh, Evil Dead 1 Bruce Campbell with just a slightly better written script. So you're saying he's real-life Bruce Campbell? <laughs> Evil Dead 1. Not Evil Dead 2. I oh, know, but Serious vs. Campbell is just real life for Campbell. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, but it doesn't come off comedic, is my point. It's he didn't more come like... off comedic in person either. You didn't think so? Yeah. You bit. can tell he was there for the money. Okay. <laughs> A nice guy, but yeah. he wasn't there to pow around. And... Well, I've seen like, the interviews where like, they're the more intimate, intimate press interviews. Yeah. And he's he's not as jokey, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, when he when he goes out there on the... You know, on the uh, uh, the last fans like the panels, panels yeah. the panels like he's he's doing a show you know that's just what he does and you know that's what they pay him to do he's an entertainer yeah at that point when he's getting an interview like it's a little bit more one-on-one uh you know a conversation much like we're having now you know mm-hmm. he's a much more just he's pretty normal you know so and when he goes on the radio too i mean he's just a pretty normal dude but um no mania cop 2 though and spoiler but i just don't even 
I don't even count this movie in existence because I hate how what happens. Bruce Campbell dies in like the first fifteen minutes, and he's like one of the best parts of the entire thing. Like he's one of my favorite characters. He's a very likable character. What's Maniac Cop about? Uh, pretty much what the title says. Uh, there's, oh, okay. a, there's a Maniac Cop who's a serial killer, mm-hmm. but you actually like the characters are really good. You know, in the movie, like they actually set up like characters you care about in mm-hmm. the movie. I haven't seen it in a long time, but when I saw it, I think the first time I saw it was only like five years ago, though, and I actually really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it. Speaking of Maniac, you got to see the uh, Elijah Wood movie. I was just talking to you that about that. That movie is a masterpiece. Oh, it's, I wouldn't really call it a movie. It's more of Murdering Women Simulator. Yeah. Because that's all well, the that, movie is. It's like a first-person view most of the time. Uh-huh. But, like, like, there's some really, like, I'm not trying to spoil it, but there's, like, a really good kill scene. Where you see like Elijah would do it because he's looking in the mirror, you know what I mean? And there's just huh. like, there's, yeah. there's there's some really smart uh, there's some smart filmmaking that went into and that. And how I handle schizophrenia too. So he's seeing all this crazy stuff. Yeah. But you're seeing it too, but it's not real because you're seeing for the eyes of a schizophrenic. And I thought that was really cool. I, I really Very cool. I really hated the way that movie was received uh, because I, I I loved it. I thought I've it was really heard a negative thing. Really? Yeah, like everyone I know loves it. Like I've never heard anyone hate it. I've heard a lot of negatives. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah. Um, overall, if you look into it, though, like internet's the internet, but yeah. if you look into it overall, you know people really did hate that movie. You know and what that uh, me of? Hmm. just like I wasn't super much paying attention, but like the sixth sense. People hated that. No, about like when you described what it is, you know, in the point of view of a schizophrenic. Well, Who's schizophrenic in the system? Is that schizophrenic? No, I know. If you would let me explain. Sorry, go ahead. The entire movie is uh, in the point of view of a ghost, a dead person. Right. Well, you don't figure that out until the end. So you don't figure out that he's a schizophrenic until the end. No, you, you know he's a schizophrenic. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, like the whole movie you know. Uh, well, okay. 15 minutes then you know. Okay. No, that's different. Okay. <laughs> but Sixth Sense is amazing, too. Speak, that's oh, yeah. another good one we could talk about, too, because... I really like But you consider the voices a Halloween movie. Wait, wait, the, the voices? Ryan, Ryan Reynolds? Yes. Voices? Yeah, you could watch that around Halloween. Yeah, it was a fun popcorn, yeah. and have a few beers yeah. with a friend. If you could watch if you could watch Beetlejuice around Halloween and that's one I definitely watch around Halloween, you could definitely watch the voices around voices Halloween. Voices is much darker though. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like that's why I said you could definitely I watch love the that. ending. Oh yeah. <laughs> the dancing. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It's it's amazing though. Somehow that movie worked. Um I was gonna say something about Maniac though. Uh, going back to that real quick because the way it was received made me mad like I agree that that style the way that they did that can really only work once that well um, and I think that's why people just hated it because it was like something that can only be pulled off one time but it was still pulled off really well like that's you know what I mean yeah and did you know he uh, Elijah Wood actually helped produce Mandy yes yeah I thought that was cool I actually yeah. I found that he's really big in the horror community he is yeah he, and he yeah. really supports like indie horror which I think is really neat he's like I don't know how to explain him yeah he's he's just kind of indie you know all together he's I feel like, like he's underutilized he really is he's a lot like uh, Dana Radcliffe in that regard just to where he's kind of like indie and like because like both him and Dana Radcliffe made enough money off their franchises that they, they're just kind of passion actors now so they're going for parts that they're actually passionate about you know no matter how big yeah, like, the film is like horns horns yeah that's another great movie i just watched horns uh last week and again uh i i really love horns you see horns i haven't seen horns yet. horns that's uh written by stephen king's son joe hill yeah and you could really tell like he does use like a lot of influence from stephen king you know mm-hmm. like it has stephen king isms in the in the story but it's definitely joe hill's story original have you seen what his story. son looks like yeah it looks like literally him looks from like the 80s yeah, it like, it's weird it looks like stephen king it looks like uh stephen king and uh creep show yeah exactly the holy mo jesus dude i love creep show <laughs> That's one of my favorite. That's, that's actually a meteor. One of, that's actually one of my favorite <laughs> Halloween films to watch around the time because, for me, Halloween is a, it's a spooky but fun holiday. Yeah. And that's like the perfect blend, kind of was trick or treat, mm-hmm. um, Terrifier. I don't know if you've seen that yet mm-hmm. with Art the Clown. No. That movie's great. Uh, it has some kills in there I've never seen in a movie before, and I think it could really go somewhere. I think mm-hmm. he could become the next slasher icon. Or like yeah. one of the big ones, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he has enough character and personality that I want to see more where he goes. Mm-hmm. So my uh, my sister comes down from Texas, right? And uh, this is like two weeks ago, whenever I went to my other sister's wedding. Uh, remember um, the Alamo? 
Oh, what's up? <laughs> Remember the Alamo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. And she comes down from Texas and, you know, she wants to watch a horror movie. You know? And, of course, she wants to watch Pet Cemetery, which, you know, I've, I've said this on the show before. Um, not my favorite. I like it better than the original It, but Pet Cemetery is not my favorite. I gotta say, after rewatching it again, there's there's some like really good stuff in Pet Cemetery, and it's definitely worth watching once a year around Halloween time. It's definitely one you gotta throw on the list because some of the scenes are actually really creepy in there. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I, I actually love the movie a lot. Yeah, I and mean, I have the same breed of cat from the movie. So yeah, <laughs> no, but that's some of the yeah some of the stuff in there is actually pretty bone chilling. Uh, I was watching you know. a little bit of it the other night. Really? Yeah. It's like some of the, like, I don't know. It, I, I wouldn't even want to say the gore. I mean, the gore is kind of cringeworthy in there um, in a good way. Like, it, it's effective. But. This may be Mandela effect. There's a, ham, a hamstringing scene in that, right? Hamstring scene. Right, where they cut the ankle and the muscles, you know. The yes, there is. There, there is. There is. Okay. I couldn't it's remember the little kid under the bed. All right, yeah. I yes, 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 yes. Now I remember this. Yeah. I couldn't remember if that was in that movie No, I absolutely not. remember that. Because I, I, I remember seeing it and going, ow. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was, yeah. It was, it yeah, there's some stuff. Feel that like, now. <laughs> there's a lot of moments like that in that movie. There's just certain other things, like, and my sister even said so, even though that's one of her favorite horror movies of all time. Like, she grew up on that movie. She could probably quote that movie front to back for you. Um but she she even said, and I agree. Like like the like the daughters annoying as hell. Uh, you know, there's things like that that you know, just make me have a problem. It hasn't been until recently that children haven't been annoying in a movie. Like now we we've been getting some good child actors. That's probably why I don't like it as much. <laughs> You know, I mean, now, like, you know. now we have like good child actors so back in the Stranger day, Things. Stranger Things. I, I could I could argue that though. I mean, then this is. I'm, this is kind of going off topic of a Halloween movie, per se. But I mean, like the Goonies. I mean, oh, you know, well, okay. Stand by me. Okay, but not where they're the main. Like if they're a side character. Okay, I see. And something. Saying. No, you're right. Now, yeah. like uh, you know, yeah, this actually brings up a good good movie. Uh, like Krampus. Yeah. That kid is like a supporting actor in that movie, but that kid is amazing in that movie. Like, but, uh, let's get your Christmas out of my Halloween, Mister. I love the mixture of uh, Christmas and Halloween. I, I like what, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas. Before Christmas. Well, well, okay, so Nightmare Before Christmas is only, what, an hour and ten minutes? It takes me two months to watch it because yeah. I stop it right at the Halloween part and I pick it up during Christmas. Uh -huh. But, um, well, it's funny you say about Halloween and Christmas because they actually, in paganism, are pretty much the same holiday. It's all about, yeah. like, the spirits coming back, life and death, mm -hmm. so they actually do have similarities. Yeah. Um Krampus, though, I can almost agree with you. It almost does lead more toward a Christmas movie. Yeah. Uh, like Gremlins. Uh, mainly Gremlins, actually. Yeah. yeah. My mom showed me a movie last year. I can't think of the name. Better Watch Out. Um, there was... Okay, I watched this movie. She, she had me watch it. And I was like, no, I really don't like it. Now, and this was last year. Yeah. And that my opinion after watching it was like, it really wasn't for me. Now we're coming back up to Halloween time again. I kind of want to watch it again. It was called Better Watch Out. It's like a Christmas yeah. uh, uh, horror mashup. You ever seen uh, Jack Frost? Yes. Not, not the the children's one, but no, the actual horror movie. About. I love that movie. Hey, and uh, Christmas Jack Frost ain't necessarily just for children. <laughs> Let's chill out. I mean. But... Get out. Get off your show. <laughs> But, uh, there's some good jokes in that movie. Uh, <laughs> like, beep those out. But, Thank uh, you. Thank you. But, yeah, no, I, I saw that Jack Frost movie. I actually rented it from Blockbuster when, not Blockbuster, I think it was the video stop. Over yeah, which, block, which one were we talking about, the horror one or the? The horror. Okay, good, okay. No, the other one I saw in theaters, because I was mm. that interested. But, uh. Mm. I don't think I've ever seen the original. I know Henry Rollins is on it. Oh, well, isn't the other one, like, a straight-to-DVD? But Jack Frost? The horror one. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, it would actually be straight to VHS. Yeah. There's a book, though. It's kind of similar to it that I actually own. I read it once. It's like, it's not the Goosebumps one. It might. I think it's called The Abom Abominable Snowman, but it almost kind of goes. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. It was kind of children's, right? Like. No, this one I'm talking about no, now. No, it's in children's. The children's one was like the Goosebumps one. There was a Goosebumps one, but then there was like an adult. Um, 
almost the same story beat for beat but like it was like the adult it was a really good book actually um and if the jack frost movie had been more like that i might have liked it more but I, I think it's ridiculous otherwise are you guys excited for scary stories to tell in the dark the movie oh isn't grimo de toro doing that he's producing it okay he's producing okay i know i'd be 100 on board if he was directing i haven't even heard of it um do you remember they were kind of like the other goosebumps but they're mainly known for like their really shocking artwork I did hear about this. Never mind. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I think they just started production. <laughs> yes, I. Uh, yeah, I am excited about that. I actually yeah. ran into that project a little bit. I kind of wish it was animated so we could actually like utilize the artwork into it, kind of yeah. make like stop motion. I think that'd been really cool. Kind of the decor line or mm -hmm. uh, what's the other one? Paranorman. Yeah. Oh, by the way, not to spoil anything, but Mandy, that some of the an the animation stuff that they did in there was really really cool. And I yeah. like they use stop motion at some points, mm -hmm. which I think that needs to come back. Mm -hmm. I know it's expensive. I know it's hard to do, but bring it back. Yeah, you brought up a movie, or you you kind of you were talking about some Tim Burton, you know, because with the stop motion. Yeah. Um, and I know that this is one that I feel like you and I only love this much, but Frank and oh, Frank and Weenie. I love Frank and Weenie. Frank and Weenie is one of the best Tim Burton movies. It's so much. <sighs> I mean, I love Course Bride. I, I yeah. prefer Frank and Weenie. I'll watch Frank yeah, and Weenie. Yeah, Frank and Weenie's a good Halloween movie, too. Yes. So is Course Bride. Yeah. But uh, you want to talk Tim Burton's animation, Frank and Weenie is just, it sets it over the top. It's it's freaking, the, I don't care what anybody says. That movie was catered more toward adults. Like, kids yeah. can watch it, but that movie was, like, uh, look what happens to the dog in that movie. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he, uh, I mean, you can imagine. It's called Frank and Weenie, and Weenie, you right. know, it's basically, you know. It comes back to life. Exactly. But the dog has to die for that to happen. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's definitely catered more toward adults in that respect. Uh, really unsung. Really unsung movie of his. It really is. Yeah. And that was, what's crazy is that's in, like, the modern Burton. Like, that came out in the modern Burton where everybody's like, oh, he sucks now. But that movie came out and nobody like even realized it. It, yeah. it seems like, or nobody ever talks about it. But it's honestly amazing. Uh, that was around 07, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like between. I'm trying to think. I think after that you end up doing uh, Alice. Alice, yeah, you're right. Yeah, because everybody's mad at him about Willy Wonka, mm -hmm. and then no one wanted to see Frank and Weenie. Yep, so. that's kind of what happened. And then people just kind of stopped caring about him. I feel like nine come around. Then too. I thought he produced nine. He's only a producer on nine. He okay. direct nine. But I mean, you can almost like probably put nine with in the same realm. Yeah, of yeah, Nightmare and Frank and Weenie. I mean, and, he didn't do Nightmare for Christmas. He just wrote the poem. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's Henry Schleck, I think. Everybody calls it his movie, and it's really not. No, like, uh, neither is a uh, Coraline. Yeah, Coraline. No, Coraline's on his movie. It's Neil Gaiman, and that yeah. was new. Uh, Neil Schluck too, though. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Henry Schluck. Yeah. Yeah, Neil Gaiman and Henry Schluck. Yeah. Same person that did Coraline did the like the the box trolls, right? Uh, same company. Same company. Same like animation. And studio. Paranorman. Paranorman, I really like. I love Paranorman. Paranorman was really good. It reminded me a lot of Odd Thomas, yeah. like a children's version of that. Monster House too. That was another really good. Yeah, Monster House was so. good. Monsters House like kind of set the bar on like how scary those animated films. Yeah, it scared my dad. <laughs> Did it really? My dad's like that movie was terrifying. It's not a kids film. I'm yeah. like, what? And then like I think Coraline came after, right? Monster House. Yeah. And then that really set the bar. That was like holy shit. <laughs> yeah, no, I I love Coraline. Everybody likes Coraline. Yeah. From what I I mean, everybody I've met that's seen Coraline was pretty blown away by how kind of creepy that movie. It's actually. creepy, but it, it's not too creepy. I, at least for kids, that's what I feel. Well, I mean, you're an old man, so you saw it like you know, as an adult. Like I saw it like as a young youngin. So. Huh? What five years older than you? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh. <laughs> I mean, get mad. If you'd been five, you would have been ten. <laughs> yeah, true. Get um, mad. Uh huh. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. French fried potatoes. Mm -hmm. Sinister line. You have any Halloween movies you watched? Right? Uh, I literally like Clive Barker's Nightbreed. All okay, right, that, now yeah, we're, we're talking. talking. We're talking. I love Nightbreed. This is gonna bring us into probably some Lovecraft and you know, <laughs> some other stuff. And no, like uh, Clive Barker, uh, that's gonna bring me right now. Like that. Or, that yeah. gave me nightmares. Really? Yeah. Well, plus I was falling asleep. I think I fell asleep during it, and I. When I fall asleep, I sometimes absorb the movie into my dreams. Mm. 
So I don't. I just remember having night terrors that night and like waking up. Oh yeah, up. You, you were telling me about this movie. Yeah. Yeah, I've actually never seen Nightbreed, but like. It was like Clive Barker's answer to Star Wars. Really? That's what's supposed to, it's supposed to be like because the movie's not finished because it was technically supposed to be like a, a, a trilogy. Oh okay. yeah, it was. It's it is a trilogy in the book series. Yeah, in the books it's the trilogy, but he never got to finish it. It was actually like the called movies. the Cabal. The Cabal. Yeah, yeah, Cabal. And then there's now, I think I knew that. There's a three hour cut of the movie called the Cabal Cut. Oh really? Yep. I, I'll have to check that out. I knew about that. I just never actually got around. To I just that. like it because it's like I really like not talked about movies. Like everyone's yeah. talking about Clive Barker's Hellraiser. I want to check out like. The other shit that no one else talks about. Uh, oh, obviously. Well, yeah. I talked about him on well, not on the way here, but while we were at work, was the problem I had because I've been watching like people's Halloween lists, mm-hmm. and it drives me nuts because I I click on it and it's like uh, one of my favorite movies to watch during Halloween is uh, John Carpenter's film Halloween. Ugh. I hate the obvious ones. Yeah. Like let's talk about something different. There's more than Halloween. Jason, Michael, Freddy. There's more. It's Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. <laughs> this is one of the best Halloween films ever made. He had to, he had to put it in. Okay. Uh, you brought up Tom Atkins before I did. I brought Tom Atkins. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually brought that movie up, yeah. Because I, I said, when I was listening off his movies, I said yeah. Halloween 3. Okay. So I guess I brought it up first. But oh, we're going to talk about the weird thing, how we thought he died. Yeah, so an- another Mandela effect thing. Where, yeah, he and I were pretty sure he was dead yeah. like I, I think i remember tom atkins dying twice i was remember being upset officially. about it because i was like oh yeah, my god too. it was right when i got into halloween 3 me too yeah. it's like oh it's a shame i wanted to meet him yeah i was watching the uh i remember specifically watching the bonus features on night of the creeps um and he was talking on there and i was like man how how old is he is he still alive and i actually looked and it said died huh but really yeah and i remember being like oh my god he died oh you know and being like really torn apart about that because Man, I love him in Night of the Creeps. But, yeah, and then recently we look it up. He's still alive. Little little Halloween 3 fun fact. Tom Atkins actually had pneumonia during the filming of Halloween yeah, 3 and acted all the way through it. Like, he was vomiting in between scenes, was having a hard time breathing. I think paramedics came at one point to give him, like, oxygen and went all the way through. You can't even tell in the movie. What was the length of the filming? The shoot? Uh, oh, God, Halloween 3. They probably cranked that out pretty quick. I want to say, like, maybe three weeks, probably. Yeah. There's not many scenes or locations. Mm-hmm. That... I don't know, though, because then again, like, I, I mean, it was definitely lower budget, which is pretty much how uh, big studio horror movies do it anyway. It's yeah. kind of a lower budget. But, like, when when I think about it, like, you're, they're still, even though it's its own thing, they're still trying to cash in from the success of one and two. So my thing is, is like, do they have, like, a bigger shoot because of that? But there's really not a whole... There are effects in the movie, actually, yeah. now I'm thinking about it. But, but there's not many, like, scenery or set changes. Like, no. you have the doctor's office, the hotel, and the factory. Mm-hmm. And, I guess, Buddy's house. But... Yeah. And the gas station. Yeah. That's about it. That's true. I... Did you know H40 only took a year to make, by the way? Halloween 40? That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Only a year. I, they didn't pump nearly they, any money I, into that. Aren't yeah. they going to make a sequel to... Uh, the newest Halloween. That's yeah, they kind of made the Star Wars announcement that they're never going to stop making Halloween movies. So I'm waiting for that. Loomis. Did it actually happen? Yeah, they're like, oh, we plan on making this a franchise. And so I'm waiting for Loomis, a Halloween story. Laurie, a Halloween oh, story. Great. And oh. then to saturate the franchise again. I don't think that's how they're going to do it. My theory has been since I saw the new Halloween that they're going to try to go with the original plan and make Halloween movies that aren't necessarily Michael Myers related. I'd be down for that. Yeah. Honestly, what does Halloween, the movie Halloween, have to do with Halloween? Nothing now, really. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, is about the holiday Halloween. Yeah. And a guy sacrificing children to an elder god to bring him exactly. back to life on Halloween night. But that being said, I think that the difference uh, now, if they do do that, I just said do do. If they do that <laughs> now, the difference will be. Thanks, Blake. The difference will be <laughs> that they will actually keep continuity though within this same story instead of you know or they make an anthology they'll make it the same universe right so like i think i honestly think the next movies is gonna focus on um uh, i feel bad what's the daughter's name in this one um karen karen yeah. is it karen yeah the granddaughter's name is... no i meant to say the granddaughter oh, Grand- i don't know her name i, I think it's karen. gonna focus on her granddaughter is going to focus on her, I think, and her character. Because I feel like they were setting up her. She going to be like the next Michael then? Mm. Uh, you know, they did the same in Halloween 4. Or did we, 
Have you done spoilers on? Have you guys done spoilers on Halloween? Four. Or no, like Halloween, the new one, page forty. No. Okay, because all right, so. But I, I'll say like if they're gonna do that, well, I'll say this: if they're gonna do that, that like she's the new Michael Myers mm. passing the torch. <coughs> excuse me, which could kind of make sense because of something they teased in this yeah. new Halloween. They could do it that way. My problem with that is if they do it, they it would probably the way they would have to do it is it would probably mimic what they set up in Halloween four. Yeah, and. And, I don't want to see that again. And well, they didn't even fulfill it in Halloween Five. They just kind of scrapped that whole idea. That's true. Like, yeah. Because at the end, Michael or uh, well, Luma. they kind of had to because of the way they ended it in Four. Like I don't even blame like Five for scrapping it because the way they ended it in Four, um, Jamie, you know, when yeah. she becomes the new Michael, mm-hmm. uh, she rage. <laughs> she's like. I mean, she's surrounded at the end there. Yeah. There's no way she's getting away with that shit, you know? So, like, I mean, yeah. You kind of worked with it, though. Like, she gets captured, <sighs> time jump. Yeah. Like, or, like, as much as I hate, the cult breaks her out. Would you want a time jump or a montage? Mm, probably time jump. I think what we'll probably get, though, is, I cannot remember the granddaughter's name again, but, uh... Great character, though. I didn't like she her. She really is awesome. The only complaint yeah. I had about her? Who calls their grandmother grandmother? Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. you're just going grandmother. Oh, grandmother. Yeah, God. that's a writing thing, though. I yeah. guess like, that's a script problem. But of course, again, they didn't really have that good of a relationship, so maybe she's just being formal because they don't know each other well. Right. I, I could argue, but it just it felt weird. Yeah, I'm gonna say this about the new Halloween. Then we'll move on uh, to some other horror movies because we've been talking about this for a while. But uh, the new with the new Halloween, they I do feel like they were setting her up as a character. I think it would be cool if Michael was dead and they continue on in this continuity. But here's the thing. Um, and they, they continue on with yeah. her character in this new continuity. Uh, here's the thing. I think that uh, just to please people, they'll do one more of Michael. Um, and it's going to be about Michael and her, I think. And I think she's going to be kind of, you know, be the new Lori for a, a hot minute. Yeah. And, you know, it would be really, I don't know, kind of crazy. Because you know that doctor scene that everybody's criticizing yeah in, the, in this new one um if they do that again but kind of like with the granddaughter but they actually follow through in the middle of the movie that would be really cool so after, that'd be a cool way to do after that. multiple viewings i actually now don't really hate the doctor scene as much it could have been more flushed out i told you my reasoning is why i like it and i think it because it gives michael motive to me to go see Lori again other yeah. than just him just you know, because, like, how do you just end up finding her every time? Yeah. You know, that, that lady moved out of state, you know? <laughs> I think, right? No, I she's mean, still in Haddonfield. She was still in Haddonfield? Yeah. Okay. Either way, like, she was, you know, moving house to house, you know? And uh, she lives on a campus in H2O. So that didn't make sense. So thank God they wiped that from canon. Um, you know, I... I oh, I are you just... talking about... Oh, I'm sorry. I heard you talk about in the new movie. No, new movie. She was in Haddonfield, yeah. yeah. I'm I, saying, I, like, she, she lived on a campus. Well, the... She still goes back. The the way he was fine here is due to the, the rage and the curse because they're brother and sister. Whatever. Yeah. I, I, I hate that. I, I hate the... I, I'm sorry. I really... At this point, because of the way Michael Myers is executed... Oh, okay. Movie, I know you want to stop talking about... What if she becomes the protege? Like... What if Michael's not dead, but, like... Well, that's kind of what I'm saying, in a way. Right. So Michael's never going to die, because that contract still exists. <laughs> There's literally a contract that says at the bottom, you cannot kill Michael Myers. Reveal his own in spirit, quote unquote. Does that change, though, when they switch over to Blumhouse? Uh, it probably still exists, because um, the, the guy who made the contract son's name's in the credits for, so, like, the owner... Still. I mean, it's still a switch over to Blumhouse. I imagine I they drew up a new contract. I don't think they'll ever get rid of Michael, because, you know, it'd be cool to see it go somewhere different other than Resurrection, where he gets kicked out of the window. By I, think it, I think what that does is, though, I think all that really does, though, is it covers their ass. in saying, like, if they, like, say they do try yeah. to take it in the new direction, and it sucks, then they could bring Michael back. It's just covering Kind of like what ass. happened with, um, H40. Or H20. Yeah. Only 20 years later, the, she cut off the head, and then the next movie, oh, it was a guy wearing the mask to uh, see what it was like. Yeah, exactly. He's still alive. It's <laughs> such a cop-out. Jamie right. Curtis was furious about that. Because yeah. that was her con- that was her agreement that only 20 years later, she'd only do it if they killed Michael. Mm-hmm. And it'd be done. And then they're like, hey, so you want that contract to sign? <laughs> Check this out. Yeah. <laughs> If she's furious about a lot of things anyway that happened in the old... Uh, so we're doing this thing I, I just complained about. 
What? Making Halloween part of the exactly. Halloween Exactly. I was like, we, we were... But, but we're talking about the new one, at least. And, but you can't kill the boogeyman. You can't kill the boogeyman. No. Exactly. He's got to stay... He's got a contract. He's got to stay, got he's gotta he stay in money. some <laughs> way, shape, or form. All right, so let's move on to some other movies. So, uh, Jareth actually was the one who was starting his... Oh, Clive Barker. He was yeah, 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 yeah Nightbreed. And um, you, you say you don't want to talk about Hellraiser because it's mainstream, but my thing is I feel like Hellraiser is always overlooked by a lot of people. It's a great Well, it's film. like Clive Barker's most mainstream work, from what I can tell. And mm. I, I just saw... Oh, what's the other 80s... Uh, Fright Night, like because oh, I, I, I saw Fright Night, the original one, mm-hmm. and then I liked that act, the vampire actor in there, and I saw that he was the main character in Nightbreed, and I'm like, he was a good actor, so I've uh, I found that even scarier than, I, well, Fright Night's not even really a scary movie. It's Fright Night's fantastic. No, it's a great. That's it's a, a great, great movie Halloween movie. movie. Great yeah. Movie to watch on Halloween. Uh, but I I think just Nightbreed's a lot scarier. It's it's about the like this guy. He keeps on having these dreams about this far off place. Um, uh, is it Meridian? Holy shit! I've seen Nightbreed. Really? Yeah. Now that you're talking Where about, where the guy cuts like, off his scalp. Yes, yes, it, yes. 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 Is, is it Meridian or Meridian? Is yeah, something it? like that. Yeah. It's, there was a movie marathon a uh, long time ago on TV, and it was actually Fright Night. This is a great marathon. Fright Night, Salem's Lot, then Nightbreed. Like, all back-to-back. Yeah. Salem's Lot, another great Halloween film. Salem's Lot, I watch every year. I'm probably going to watch that tomorrow, actually, because I haven't watched it this year yet. I, of Stephen King adaptations, Salem's Lot. Scariest vampire movie I've seen. Because that, that uh, what's the main vampire's name? Do you remember? I don't remember. Um, He's so fucking scary, man. Like, the head vampire, <laughs> though. The very Nosferatu look. The glowing eyes. That is my favorite Perfect. vampire design ever. I have the uh, bust of it in my room. Yeah, you do. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, that that's pretty cool. I, you seen Salem's Lot? No. Watch it. Watch Salem's Lot. Just get uh, even if it's not around Halloween time, you do need to see the movie. Like, um, set aside three. It's I'll three hour movie. I've seen movie. it. That's true. It's actually not even a movie. It's actually a miniseries. Well, yeah. Well, it was too. Yeah. Yeah. The original. No, I like. I haven't seen it. I know. I know. Uh, I, I I would recommend Salem's Lot. Way before. Over it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the original, it, yeah. Definitely okay. the original. Yeah. I don't know about the, the remake. I'd put them about equal to each other. Uh, no, Salem's Lot. Set aside, like, a good three hours for yourself and okay. watch that fucking thing. It's really well really fleshed out characters. I rewatch The Stand. The Stand was interesting. I always liked The Stand, personally. I, I liked it. I don't think I l- loved it as far as Stephen King adaptations. Cat's Eye, though. <laughs> oh, Cat's Eye, God, Cat's I love Eye that movie. never gets love, man. Yeah, Cat's, Cat's Eye, Eye, it's just fun. It's, once again, it's another fun anthology, and I like the idea that the story is just through a cat's point of view. Just, yeah, it's, it's, it uh, sounds interesting. Christine's in it. There's, it's like three short films, uh-huh. but like, uh, what connects them all is just that the same cat. It's, it's just walking awesome. around this town, oh, right, just yeah. seeing all this crap yeah, happening. Yeah, one it's night. pretty cool how they do it, uh, and all three short stories are very good. Uh, it's got Drew Barrymore in it, uh, as a child, um. And yeah, uh, my favorite story is the second one in there, the building one. I like I'm the scared troll of heights, one. so that one got me. The troll one's my favorite. Everybody likes the troll yeah. one. What do you guys I, think? Just, what do you guys think of Maximum Overdrive? Maximum Overdrive. That's the, oh, yeah. uh, is, is that a Halloween fun? movie or not really? You know, I'm gonna kind say of, it is because it's it's kind fun. Of, yeah, it's a fun movie. I've seen it so many times, but it's so bad. Because Halloween is schlock. You yeah. know, you get fun, you get gore. A movie, in the words of my hero Joe Bob Briggs, a movie where the plot does not get in the way of the story. And that's what Maximum Overdrive <laughs> Okay, my problem with Maximum Overdrive is how do they drive the station wagon if all the other vehicles can be, can't be driven because they have minds of their own? Because uh, the plot demands it. <laughs> but on to Indy Clive Barker, um, two I'd recommend to you. Uh, Midnight Meat Train, mm-hmm. and I, which is really Indy, actually had a budget. And, Midnight Meat Train's good. And uh, Book of Blood. Okay. And basically what it is, Book of Blood is this kid who's basically a message board for ghosts, and they carve messages into his skin. Yeah. And it's a really cool story. Um, highly recommend it. I have it, so I just wanted to do. Have you seen uh, VHS? Oh, I love the VHS. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. third one is trash. Yeah, third one sucked ass. I hated Viral. I was so angry because it's a perfect series. I loved one. Two I loved. Three. Just... It should have been consistent, man. I, they, yeah. they didn't what about do... uh, Dark Web? It was a British mini... Uh, like, Black Mirror? Like, no, 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 Dark Web. It was uh, done on... That's not Unfriended, is it? No. Oh, okay. no. It was like a 
New one friends. It was like a. I think right. It was like VHS, but um, everything had to do with the internet, but more like people stalking uh, people using cameras. I'm in. Yeah, that's new one friend. That's called Unfriended Dark Web. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've heard about the plot. That's why I know that. It's, what you're it's pretty about. good. Yeah. Um, the first Unfriended I liked. I didn't see the second one. Yeah, I think the one. Uh, there's another one on Netflix I saw a few years ago called Seven Sins, but it not not the... Yeah. yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. I think I watched it. Uh, it, it they talk about this thing called... Seven Deadly Sins? Is yes. That, yeah, I did think I saw it. Yeah, that. they uh, talk about this guy... Uh, oh... Well, I can't reveal. I don't want to give too many spoilers, yeah. but they talk about this thing called the game, not the yeah. internet game. Yeah. Uh, you really just dated yourself there, Jerry. Yeah, I know. Uh, where? Keep going, guys. Keep talking. I keep talking. Uh, they keep paying this guy to like do like little things. Like, I'll give you a hundred dollars to swat that fly, or I'll give you a thousand dollars to yell at this woman. Then it eventually gets up to I'll give you. A million dollars to kill this person and if he doesn't do it worse things happen i think i remember something like that it's, it's a really it, good i remember that movie. idea yeah uh yeah no it's like kind of a it, it does have a movie. good uh spin on it too yeah like a twist ending yeah no i'll check it out was it that's the seven deadly sons yeah i think so and not the anime you weave <laughs> and uh I, i'm pretty sure i know what he's talking about yeah did you like it? If you, I remember like liking it. it. Yeah. yeah, I remember liking it. I don't remember like. Uh, okay, I'll tell about talk about my favorite scene though. Yeah, uh, I mean it's been out for a hundred years. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. more like ten maybe. Um, ten years, I don't care. Uh, it's uh, he tells him to just pull up a cable in the middle of a fog on a street, and then a bunch of moped uh, people on mopeds come by and get decapitated. That's cool. Or they get like snagged on the on barbed wire on the cable. Hmm. You know. what? I'm going to address something, and this will be something you can use for your future show. If a spoiler comes out and you don't like it, guess what? It's not what happens, it's how we get there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I, I 100% agree with that, honestly. Um, one uh, that I think you and I also both agree on, a uh, movie, uh, Stephen King adaptation mm -hmm. too, 1408. Oh, 1408, I love. Was underrated when it came out. Um, it was pretty ill-received, wasn't it? Well, I th I, I'll be honest, it was mismarketed. Um, it wasn't the movie. I mean, it was marketed as a ghost movie, but it was marketed to be one of those more subtle ghost movies as to where, like, the ghosts are very in your face. You know what I mean? But they're not necessarily supposed to be, like, the scariest thing. The scary thing is uh, it's supposed to make you kind of feel like you're going insane when you're watching it. Yeah. It's more of a psychological thriller mm -hmm. than it is like a ghost movie, you know, like with jump scares and things right, like that. Right. This is supposed to be more of a psychological thing. And it's probably one of the best John Cusack performances I've ever seen in a movie. I actually watched this last week. And John Cusack is really awesome in this movie. And he plays a guy who's going insane perfectly in, in, in just this room. And that's what the room does to you. It's not... It is haunted with ghosts, but I mean, it's more so about it just makes you go insane and the things it does. Wow. I mean, you should watch that if you haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah. 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 Mind if I get back to like kids' Halloween movies? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah Sorry. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys I, think? I didn't mean to interrupt. What do you guys think of Casper? Huh? Casper. Oh, we were actually talking about this at work. I love Casper. Yeah. But it is also a really dark movie when you're an adult. Because really? it's. Okay, so it's about a child dying. Then yeah, the out. story, yeah. It is yeah, it is dark. pretty dark. But no, but then no, you yeah. find out the ghost of Casper accidentally was haunting his own father, drove him insane, yeah. and led him to killing himself. Yeah. Oh. yeah, there's all those, like... Like, if you read the newspaper articles and all that, it's there. There's like, all those, like, subplots weaved into it that are yeah. kind of, like, really fucking dark. But it's, all, but it's it. very light tone so because that, you're seeing for the eyes of that, a child. That DVD, that VHS prequel was awful, though. Oh, yeah, we were talking about that, too, because you said you had the PlayStation game for it, or the PC game. Which one? Uh, the Spirit Begins oh. of Casper. That, that was yeah. it, yeah. I had the, uh, yeah, the PC game, which was fun. Um, I don't remember the movie being awful. Is, I think I hated Casper. Is it, is it a movie Wars. about a child dying? Is it just a drama? No, it, point? It, it, it's, it's, it's before the uncles, uh, but it, oh, they had those two other ghosts in there, right? Yeah, yeah. It, I couldn't remember it. It was I watched it once, and it was just about this kid that he was 
befriended Casper and his dad was going through a divorce, so he went to the mansion and befriended a ghost. That, that was, end of no, story. The first one just got a cheaper actor. Yes. Gotcha. Wasn't one of the ghosts like green in that, like Ghostbusters? I, I can't Ghostbusters, remember. Ghostbusters, another great Halloween movie. We'll, and we'll watch around Halloween. The Ghostbusters, or at least uh, Ray, is in Casper. Yeah, that's true. That is her? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ray's in there because he even has a mustache, which was weird. Yeah, yeah, he, he's Yeah, because when they're calling like the Exorcist, which is the SNL father, Gushamani, he comes out, and then you see Dan Aykroyd running out. Well, it's like the full Ghostbuster get up, must, and he has a mustache son, and he's like, call somebody else. And he gets <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Off. So uh, definitely there's your Ghostbusters story. Oh, uh, oh, the Frighteners. Oh, right, oh, Michael J. Fox. oh, that's such a good one. Yeah, it's yeah. overlooked. Nobody really. It really is. It's it's hilarious. Somebody it's asked me about it the other day. Um, if I if I'd ever seen, it. I, I wouldn't think like, it would oh, be a wow. Peter Jackson movie. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah, that's crazy. So you know, well, we... Dead Alive is a Peter Jackson movie, and uh, which is getting a 4K remaster. And, oh, thank God. And uh, Brain Dead. Yeah. Not Brain Dead. Um, Bad Taste. Dead Alive is a great one to watch because uh, Dead Alive is just. Some of them. It's the most disgusting movie you'd ever seen, but the substance in there, it really doesn't have much. It's just kind of fun and stupid. And it, it, it's amazing that it was actually directed by Peter Jackson. Like, even more surprising than The Frighteners, because that movie is... It's almost like a train wreck that's just so much fun to watch. <laughs> Did you know um, so Michael J. Fox just got diagnosed with uh, Parkinson's during the filming of that? You know the part during the interrogation where he's During freaking... Frighteners? Yeah. Really? You know the part where he's freaking out uh-huh. in the during the interrogation? And he starts, like, shaking really badly? That's real? That was actually him having no a fit, shit. and he uh. told them, keep it, because it worked really well with the scene. Wow. Yeah. That's he was cool. actually legit having a fit with uh, Wagner's at that point. Wasn't he having trouble during, uh, uh, off topic of Halloween yeah. movies, but wasn't he having trouble during, like, Back to the Future 3, too? Or something I, like think, that. I think there was I some think struggle. I think it started trickling in. Yeah. Uh, Spin City, I think, is when it really went. Yeah, he had to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spin, Spin City. City, he had to leave, yeah. Uh, uh, midway. Did they kill him off in Spin City? I don't think they, I think he left. They they just, like, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think, I like, you know, he moved or whatever. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. But, back to Stephen King, because, hail to the king. Uh, the Mist. I haven't seen that one yet. You haven't seen... Oh, uh, dude. It, so it's Frank Darabont, who's like the king of making Stephen King movies, yeah. unintended. And um, basically, are you aware what the plot is? No. Um, it's where Half-Life got his inspiration. I don't know if you played the games of those. Um, so the government is messing with uh, dimensions. Mm-hmm. Well, they rip it open, and like these giant insects and different creatures come pouring out. And it's about a father and son inside a... Um, kind of like a small, like local grocery store and it's kind of a little commentary on how humanity works that you have like religious people like everyone breaks off their own clicks so you have these religious right. people and they're like oh this is a reckoning of god we need to punish the sinners then you have like the outlaws like, oh, so basically a post-apocalyptic horror movie kind of during it but it's like all happening right there so you see like society slowly breaking down with this group of people and different people representing what yeah and what's cool about it what i recommend is i don't know if you knew this you've, you've seen it right the mist Yes. Um, it was that the Mark, well, isn't that the Mark Ball, Wahlberg one? Oh, uh, no, that's no. Thomas, it's Thomas Shane. It's Thomas okay. Shane. Is, it was supposed to be black and white. And when you get the DVD, there's the bare box cut, but it's black and white. Because he wanted it to look like a 40s and 50s monster movie. And it actually makes the CG in that movie look way better. I didn't know that. or I, I must have known that, though, because I, I've like watched like the bonus features yeah. on that. So I must have known it and just it left my mind, but... Yeah, it makes the uh, it makes the monsters look better, and it kind of fits this. It's a B movie with substance at that point. Yeah, because it's a commentary on you know the world, the crisis going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen it, recommend it highly. Really good kind of B movie. Uh, two great B movies: uh, Reanimator and Bride of Reanimator. Oh, Reanimator. Reanimator is, I don't know. I actually at this point just because. Of how much fun it is, I might actually like Bride slightly better, but they're both really, really good. Like, Reanimator's definitely supposed to be taken a little more seriously than Bride of Reanimator, but there's still some really good, like, uh, story points um, in Bride of Reanimator that go really deep into the characters, and my my guy, who's that guy that plays him? Uh, Herbert West? Thank you, yeah. Well, no, Herbert West's character, I'm asking, like, is there... Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. That's the character's name. Yeah, uh, it's uh, God, it's gonna be. I, I know after the leave, this is gonna, this is gonna pop up. I don't know that guy though, who plays Herbert West. Um, 
just immerses himself in that role, like, but in each of those movies. You heard how that happened, how that movie was played out, right? Like uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, like how like it all came to be. No. Um. So the director hired a bunch of stage actors, and they rehearsed the movie every day together for like two weeks mm-hmm. to get that chemistry. And only one other movie has done that, which is another great Halloween movie, Return of the Living Dead. Oh, there you go. Yep. And we do we should talk about some Return of the Living Dead. Return of the Living Dead is some of my favorite zombie movies. How we my doing relationship. On, how we're doing on time. Oh, we're good. We're good. We get. We got a little bit. I got time. Yeah, I got time. You got time. I got. Time. I got time. <laughs> Um, you got time? Uh, He's got places to be, but... uh, He's fine, he's fine. Fashionably late. Yeah, be fashionably late, Jared. Come on. Uh, I I said because it's the Halloween edition, I'm good to go hour and a half on this one, but, uh, which we're getting closest to, but, uh... Okay. Yeah. If you leave, we'll just see, like, somehow I go, you you annoy me, and I'll just snap and you're gone. We'll be fine. Yeah. Um, Huh? It's not hard. No, it's not. It's like literally two frames. It's not hard at all, but it might Well, I guess I <laughs> um, but Return of the Living Dead, my relationship with those movies are pretty interesting because I like I really like the first one a lot, um, and then I watched the second one. I remember going like, it, I mean, I remember thinking it was a fair sequel to it, and then just rewatching the second one, it just became another one that just was like near and dear to my heart. And then like with three. I always just, like, overlooked it. Like, I did see yeah. it. I saw it early on, but, like, I just kind of overlooked it. And um, my you- my buddy is a huge fan of those movies. And he, he's like, what do you think of 3? I said, um, you know, I saw it and it was fine. And then, um, and I bet you're going to ask me if I've seen the cut. Uh, yeah, the new Blu-ray where they put all the... I didn't see that. Watch I need to see it. But, because uh, that was one of my gripes with that movie. Yeah. Uh, but he's like, rewatch it. I was like, you sure? He's like, yeah, it's pretty good. I rewatched it recently. You gotta rewatch it. I rewatched three. I love that trilogy. That that uh, trilogy of the Return of the Living Dead movies. They're and all so good. Yeah. There's a moment because that movie is very schlockish. You know, the third one. And it then the, the line of dialogue from Riverman talking about handing the, that penny down to the next person, the next person, you can make world peace. Mm-hmm. Why was that in there? Like, don't know. I love that line. I think it's great. That line was too good to be in that movie. Yeah. Like it just doesn't fit at yeah. all because the whole movie is just gore, blood, cursing, and then. Yeah. That brilliance of writing of such a well-made yeah. character. Yeah, I unfortunately always sort of remember that though, because like it was, again, I stepped away from it, but yeah. I do remember like really liking it the last time I watched it. Um, but my um, excuse me, my favorite um, of those three is still the first one, and then that four and five. Forget it. Like those are horrible. Um, they did a four and five. Necropolis. Excuse me, like Necropolis and. I didn't. Know, I did not know that. Yeah, your brother was actually talking to me about those. He doesn't like them either. Yeah. He said they're horrible. But, uh, yeah, they're just so bad. Was it kind of that era, like, early 2000s, like, we got Creep Show 3 and had nothing to do with the Creep Show's formula? Uh, pretty much. I think uh, the last one they did actually came out later 2000s, though, yeah. believe it or not. Um, and it was bad. Creep Show 2 is good. I love the raft. Creep Show 2 is good. That's one, that's I like really Creep Show 1 story. a little better. Leslie Nielsen and Ted Danson together <sighs> were, were was just amazing in that first uh, Creep Show. Leslie Nielsen's just a god. Leslie Nielsen and Creep Show was fantastic, and Leslie Nielsen and he's always good, but yeah. uh, as far as like a uh, more serious take on a role, uh, was fantastic in Creep Show, and he was great in the original Prom Night, which the original Prom Night people overlooked too. That was, that remake sucked. Yeah, that was horrible. Um, it was a PG thirteen first of all, so yeah. I mean, uh, and the, the original was R, you know, and then the Prom Night sequels are not good. I can't get into the Prom Night sequels. I actually got them all. Like I, I think there was like four of them. Yeah. Uh, Prom Nights of of the original series, and the I tried to get into all of them, and I just couldn't. Uh, the first one though, I really loved. Here's a great one. We'll agree on Sleepaway Camp trilogy. Yes. Uh, Sleepaway, Sleepaway Camp. Camp might be better than Friday the Thirteenth. I, I agree. It's kind of the I same. Have way more fun with that. Yeah. Uh, Sleepaway Camp. For, first of all, the first Sleepaway Camp is much deeper. And I mean, you didn't really watch the second one, which you probably would have eventually, but you didn't really watch it until I was like really pushing you to watch it. I remember. And that second movie, man, is just so much fun. It's gory. Yep. Uh, what they pulled off in that time period. No, I mean, not like they couldn't, I yeah. mean, like look at evil dead, but, uh, just the amount I mean, of gore. Sam Raimi almost got arrested and jailed for the original evil. Dead. Exactly. I mean, hmm. you know, which I, I'll bring it up. The original Evil Dead, another oh, yeah. Halloween movie. Yeah, All three perfect. of them, just watch them. 
Um, even Army of Darkness goes great because yeah. it's just, I mean, there's it's got skeletons. Exactly. You got to watch the original Evil Dead trilogy um, around Halloween time, and that's probably the most fun you will have watching movies around Halloween time is watching that original Evil Dead trilogy, and of course the original Halloween movie. Oh, and the series. <laughs> What's up? In the Army of Darkness series too. Oh, you mean Ash vs. Evil yeah, Dead? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, Ash vs. Yeah, yeah. Evil Dead. Yeah, you know, pop on that oh, series, man. Um, someone needs to finish it. Yeah, I need to watch season three. I saw two, finally. I'm caught up. You get seven. Two. I will. I was actually thinking about buying three the other day, and I didn't. It's fairly really cheap now. It's like twenty. <laughs> yeah, that's I not bad. Think that's why I saw steel books. By the way, off topic. They have they have steel books. Yeah, I saw grab it. It's a nice steel book. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, that's why I was thinking about buying. I was yeah. like, the steel books here, it's cheap. Might as well get it. I didn't. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, <laughs> I know you haven't watched it, but if you watched Chilling Adventures with Sabrina yet, no. I'd recommend it. It's pretty good. It's fun, dumb, but also really good horror elements. Better than Riverdale? Uh, I haven't watched Riverdale, but I... I tried watching Riverdale. It was too soap opera-ish. This isn't really... It's CW. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, so the first few episodes of Sabrina, you could tell, is going to be on the CW. But now it's going on. It's getting more of a structure, better story. And I'm engrossed in it. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, Visually, it's beautiful. Uh, it seems like they do like a backdrop, like they darken everything, and your characters and the objects around them are really vivid, kind of like Suspiria. So is it like a more of a horror feel? Yeah, it's way more horror than mm-hmm. uh, Riverdale. Okay, that's good. Um, I, I haven't seen it, but I, I've seen the trailer. I can kind of compare it to Vavitch or... Um, oh, the Witch, by the way, is like another fantastic... Uh, Vavitch, sure. It is Vavitch, what? Whatever. Don't, don't, don't be a, don't be a Everybody I know except for you calls it the Witch. Because they're so. wrong. <laughs> okay. You're the only person that calls it Vavitch. It's Vavitch. Okay. But it's a good movie. It is a good fantastic movie. movie. Fantastic movie. Fantastic. One of the better horror movies to come out in the last 10 years. Uh, What's that new series on Netflix that everyone keeps talking about? Oh, the House something. The, uh, Hill something. The I, Haunting on Hill House. The yeah, Hill I've House. heard that's like really scary. I haven't checked yeah. that yet. Yeah, I've been wondering People are it. like losing sleep over that shit, supposedly. Yeah, but that happens with like, what was it? Uh, Paraborman activity. Oh, that, that's a movie. Like, yeah. oh, someone died of a heart attack. Like, no, the guy was probably eating, like, five triple cheeseburgers. Like, I thought that movie it. was, like, god awful. It wasn't a god awful movie, the first one, but it was, like, the the way they marketed that was so overhyped. Yeah. I thought there was cool stuff. Like, there was cool, like, uh, things from a filmmaking standpoint in that movie, as far as, like, a found footage, you know, being one of the first. There was some great things in there. Um, but that wasn't as scary as they said it was. I mean, by any means. Would Cloverfield be a Halloween movie? Yeah, you can watch it yeah. for Halloween. Especially, yeah, ten, especially 10 Cloverfield Lane. You yeah, can, yeah like, definitely. 10 Cloverfield Lane is straight, like, it's just I wish creepy. John Goodman did more movies. John Goodman killed it in that movie. He, John Goodman has, like, three phenomenal roles. I'll tell you what they are. 10 Cloverfield Lane, Inside Lewin Davis, and Oh Brother Where I Red Red State. Big Lebowski. Oh, he's I missed that one. Yeah. Usually when, he does stuff, usually when he does stuff with Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, no. Usually when he does stuff with Coen Brothers, he kills it um, in those movies when he's with the Coen Brothers. Um, yeah, Josh has been watching Sabrina. And meanwhile, I've been watching uh, Bewitched, <laughs> the original Bewitched kind of, series. Kind which of is, a little apples, a little, little it mirror is. there of difference. It is. But kind of like polar opposites. Pretty much. But I'm <laughs> saying like on the TV end of Halloween things. That's one to watch. I mean, yeah, and, Adam's Family, The Monsters. Yeah. There's so many great classics. And I really, I really want to watch Stranger Things through again around yeah. this time of the year because it came out around this time of the year last I, year, and I'm kind of craving it now. I will say, I think Sabrina is a better Halloween show for Halloween than Stranger Things. Really? Yeah, it just has a whole Halloween feel around it. Sabrina? Yeah. Okay. It, it's a better Halloween. Is it show, binge worthy? Opinion. Oh yeah, I've been binging it. Like, whenever you get the chance. How many episodes? What about oh, Bewitched? Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah. It's like, they're like an hour each? Yeah, about an hour. Okay. A little over an hour. Yeah, it's about ten hour watch. Yeah. No, I, I love it to death. I'd highly recommend it. And I highly recommend you watch Bewitched around Halloween time, the original. It's a good Halloween show. But yeah, no, about Sabrina. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, you, know, you, you call him Grandpa, but you've been stabbing Bewitched at him for like ten hours. Yeah, he's the only grandfather I know that hasn't seen it. Because he's not going to watch that heresy. He's going to burn her at the stake. Yeah, true. You like that show. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, but I'm also going to be burned at the stake. Yeah, probably. Um, hey, I liked Halloween Town. 
Did you know that? You know town... that does not hold up, but they're still kind of fun. They're, they're, it doesn't they're hold just... up, but it's like stupid nostalgia. It's kind of it's... funny to like make fun of yourself for a lot of yeah, those yeah. when you were it, a kid it, it when was, you rewatch them. Stupid now. nostalgia. It is but, stupid nostalgia. But it is cool that the town around Halloween time redoes the town, makes it look like it did in the yeah, movie. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah. Uh, the town that the Blob was filmed in, they do that as well, and then they played the Blob I love in the, the blob, theater. Sorry. That is great. Yeah. Oh no, the Blob. That's a great Halloween movie. Yeah. Fifties uh, horror is a great Halloween. Both the original and the uh, I actually did like the remake of the. Bible. I've never seen the remake with the who was the actress that was, was it, in there. Oh God, it's like it's that girl from the Becker Show. Did that come out in the early two thousands? Uh, I thought it was late nineties. No, eighties. Eighties. The second blob. Eighties. Yeah. yeah, it's a really good eighties movie. And yeah. then the first one you had. Uh, oh God, who's the actor? Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen yeah. playing a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> Does that at all look like a teenager? No, it, it's he's awesome though. Thirty-five. Oh, speaking of the '90s, I I really didn't like Phantoms with Ben Affleck. But Ben Affleck's the bomb in Phantoms. Uh, okay, Jason Muse. There you go. <laughs> Tusk, great Halloween movie. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there's I'll a little segue there. there. Hey, you can watch Dogma around that time. <laughs> Dogma yeah, you works. Could. Dogma it, works. It's a little little horror element. Uh, yeah. Little. Yeah, honestly, a little I don't remember Phantoms that well. It, I just it's remember that not joke. that great. It doesn't hold up. I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I, I don't think it does hold up because, like, I think I watched it like a few years back again. Yeah, I did too. It, it really no. does. It, it's it's set in the '90s. It, it's not going out of the '90s. It's... I haven't watched it since I was young. Does faculty hold up? Yes. It does. Derek was about, just talking. I love about the faculty. Yeah, I, I love I, anything like with like like people having to go into groups and uh, and. Figure out who does what, yeah. who's good at this. And, and, I mean, come on, we're in Indiana. We're the guy on, on the faculty, the kid makes meth in his garage or his house. Because uh, <laughs> aliens can't do meth. <laughs> That's <is> crazy. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, was it Coke? No, wasn't it Coke? I... Well, they call, were calling them tweakers, so I thought it was meth. It may have been. I don't know. I just remember it was a white powder. Well, they, they, were smoking, they were snorting it up their nose. Yeah. Oh, well, that'd, that'd be a Coke. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Coke, you snort up your nose. That was bad when, like, Josh Hartner was coming out and everything. What happened to him? He I was don't in Halloween 20 years later. That was his first movie. Yeah, yeah. so what happened to him? And then he started coming out and everything. And Sin City, you see him in. Yep, he's in brief, Sin City, yeah. For a brief moment, you know, he's the uh, Hitman, right? In the very beginning story? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you see, he's in the beginning of the end of that movie. You see him there, and he's never seen again, and, like, ever. And yeah, speaking of aliens, John Carpenter's the thing. Yeah, that's great. But movie. I consider it more of a Christmas film because of the snow. Should you watch They Live around Halloween time? You think? Yeah, I think you should watch They Live anytime. Oh yeah, true. But I mean, They Live is a great John oh, Carpenter yeah. film. I don't see almost any John Carpenter's great during Halloween. I want to watch Prince of Darkness. I want to see vampires. I want to see vampires. I've uh, never seen that. I think I saw it, but young. Yeah. I know my dad didn't like it. He read the book. Yeah. Uh, In the Mouth of Madness, uh, highly recommend. You know, it's an action movie, but Assault on Precinct 13 kind of does work on uh, around Halloween time, too. Because there's, like, it's 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 action, but just kind of the idea that guys, like, you know, breaking in and stuff. Well, it's kind of like works. Escape from uh, New York and L.A. They're action, but there's... They a, work, too. They there's work a scary the, element of, like, this CD, like, the cannibals in the sewer, like... Yeah, no, I watched Escape from New York last week. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, I'm going to bring up a really bad comic book movie and bad halloween movie okay batman forever technically a halloween movie he, he's not wrong he's not wrong because they not. trick or treat during that movie he's not but it, it, it's, a, it's a really bad halloween and bad I, so sorry that i'm that i'm throwing batman returns in there too because uh, yeah, batman returns this christmas yeah that's christmas with the penguin and everything with the giant christmas tree yeah, but like it's like Tim Burton esque. It's the most Tim Burton Batman movie of the two. Um, it's Tim it's Burton dark. taking every Batman character and just turning that dial all the way up to eleven. It's dark, yeah. And it's well, dark it's and camp it. and dark though. Yeah, yeah. which is Tim I mean, Burton's the, the, yeah, yeah. The Catwoman story is kind of like it's got some Halloween element uh, to it. I mean, it's, yeah. The Penguin story doesn't have Halloween element to it. I would uh, the say form it's creepy a, guy. I, it, I, I would watch that right after or before watching Nightmare Before Christmas. I actually can, I actually watched Batman Returns around Christmas time because it's very... I mean, it takes place during Christmas. Yeah. 
But it also reminds me of a kid, the toys that came out around the time. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. the penguin, all that. like. That. Don't get me wrong, I do watch it around Christmas time yeah. usually. I'm just saying, like, I think it could work around Halloween, too. It could. It's well. a good middle area. Yeah, Thanksgiving. There you go. It's a good Thanksgiving film. No, That's what I I'm busy, about wa- before Christmas. I'm busy watching planes, trains, and automobiles in it, November. So. It's <laughs> before you put it. You still got your skeleton out, but you're also about to put on a Santa Claus hat on it. That's where Batman Returns is at. What about that's the, my favorite Batman movie. What about the Burbs with Tom Hanks? Totally. I love the Burbs. Okay, see, that's the one older Tom Hanks movie I've never seen, so that's what I'm asking. Really? About. No, yep. watch it. You you would love it of all people. Oh, I love Tom Hanks. Yeah, uh, all older Tom Hanks is generally pretty good. I mean, It's one of those it stories, it's a very normal start, and then it gets wackier, crazier, and then you're just like, what? Should you watch The Cable Guy around Halloween? Oh. <laughs> uh. That guy that always came to see my mom? Audience, we'd like to apologize for him. Uh, uh, Harrison Wells, you know what to do. Go back in time and kill him. Please? That's not Harrison Wells, ding dong. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. That's not. Uh, actually, it's Eobard Thawne wearing Harrison Wells' skin like a suit. So it's not Harrison Wells, it's Eobard Thawne. First season, we think it is, though. We think, but we're wrong. We're definitely segueing. Huh? We're definitely segueing. Uh, I think it's pretty terrifying if a man comes back from the past, kills someone, wears their skin as a suit, just to tutor you. No, this is pretty average. This happens all the time. What? This happens all the time. Anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, what about Hannibal Lecter? Oh, the Hannibal movies? Yeah. Yeah, you watch those. They're horror. They're horror. Yeah, it's... Silence of the Lambs is a horror movie. Like, yeah, I'm but curious. like... No, it's a Halloween thriller. Movie. Is it a Halloween movie? Comparatively to what we've been talking yeah. about, yeah, I, I'd agree. Like, I think the concept's scary. Cannibalism, yeah, yeah. like, and then like the stuff. second Hannibal is definitely something you watch around Halloween time. The 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 one that you don't is probably Red Dragon, Wait, if any of them. Second Hannibal. You said Hannibal. The second Hannibal, Sons of the Lambs. No, the first one's Sons of the Lambs. No, the first one's Manhunter. What? Man Hunter and Red Dragon are the first ones, and then oh, it's story order. Yeah, story sorry, order, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I get what you're saying yeah. now. No, I'm saying. Oh, you're talking about Hannibal, Hannibal, like the third. That's what. It, the, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay yeah. Okay. The movie Hannibal. Okay, I get that, you. that okay. you definitely watch around Halloween time. I'm saying if there's one that you don't watch, it's probably Red Dragon. Yeah, yeah. The TV show's Hannibal. good. That's also a good Halloween watch. I haven't seen it yet. I heard, yeah, I I heard good it. things. It's. One of my favorite shows, I think, has come out. How does that tie in? Mm-hmm. Or is it just like a retelling? It's a retelling all the way up to Red Dragon. Okay. And then they're going to go into Silence of the Lambs. They're actually going to do a remake of Silence of the Lambs and use that cast. So it was supposed it. to go into Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Okay. But the show ends on a way that it could come back and it couldn't come back and you'd be okay with it. Yeah. Are we talking about Trick or Treat? On no. The best you Halloween mentioned film? it, but we didn't really get into that it. That is no. one of the best Halloween films to come out in years. As far as Halloween feel, like capturing the fall time. In the spirit of it. Like the idea of Sam being the spirit of Halloween, Sam Hain in the movie being a small child. That's like the perfect idea for it. Mm-hmm. It's like down pat. Yeah. And the guy to Krampus, like same guy. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Michael. Uh-huh. I can't think of his name, but yeah, really. I'll say Michael Douglas, but I don't think that's... Damn good director. Or good yeah. Di- yeah. No, and I assume the new Godzilla, thank God. Yeah, because those visuals are beautiful. Mm-hmm. I've never actually got those pretty good Halloween watch as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd say it's acceptable. I mean, it's, it's acceptable as King Kong is to watch yeah. around Halloween time. I would say. Uh, but no, some of those are some of the best visuals I've ever seen those characters depicted. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um. No, there's like three movies though that really capture fall to me. Original Halloween. Uh, all of the new Halloween did it pretty well as well. Also. Uh, but I would say the original Halloween captures that fall time feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trick or Treat and Salem's Lot all just capture that. Um, I know you haven't finished it. I don't know if you've watched it. Over the Garden Wall, no. the Cartoon Network. Oh, that's series. a good series. Yeah, that's one that I was gonna ask you about because what I did see of it, mm-hmm. like I was gonna say, like it's definitely something I want to watch. I'll probably watch it tomorrow. To be it's it's it. not just Halloween. That's what I love about it. It's the entirety of fall. Like the idea of what fall is supposed to be ushering in Halloween. It definitely seemed to capture that yeah. feel too, as well. Uh, it kind of reminded me of. Uh, just, just vibe wise, yep. uh, trick or treat a little bit, just like uh, yeah, just it's, as far as the vibe. Kind of got goes. a little del Toro flair to it, with oh, definitely. like the folklore. Definitely, yeah. And uh, no, uh, I don't want to say too much because if anyone hasn't seen it, going blind. 
Um, yeah, I want to see this. I want to finish beautiful. this out, and I'm probably going to do is that. It, we'll... Elijah Woods types it, actually. Yes, yes. Uh, he, he really voices, is. And um, uh, Tim Curry. Work. Yep, and Tim Curry uh, reprise. Yeah, actually, I think that's right after his stroke, too. Is it right before his stroke or right after? Before, I think. What was it before? I think, I think if I'm thinking time-wise, yeah, right before. It was. I think that was like Wild Thornberry's era for still like he was still doing the wild yeah bears. yeah so uh one other one i want to bring up i'm going to name it and you guys can agree or disagree edward scissorhands uh it's christmas and halloween i, I think say, it works a little on more both. christmas for I think me it works on yeah, both yeah a little bit more christmas i i yeah. like i put the under the nightmare before christmas like stuff okay i just noticed a feed every tim burton movie we put out has been that middle ground of christmas and halloween yeah well except yeah. for like paranorman well he uh, didn't do that though that was oh okay it had uh, that it looked like it, though. Oh, well, yeah. Well, it's actually Henry Slock's style that okay. Tim Burton would be known for because he wrote Nightmare for Christmas yeah. and then people thought it was his movie. And then he just adapted for Corpse Bride, Frank and Weenie. Yeah. Mars Attacks, that's another good one for Halloween. Oh, Mars Attacks. Mars yeah, Attacks. absolutely. I love that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we got to bring up, because uh, Jareth was actually talking about kids horror movies earlier you gotta bring up adam stanley really quick before we oh yeah, off here. yeah. adam yeah. family and adam's family values is watching back to back honestly that's yeah an obvious recommendation yeah, I, no. I would think um but you know i feel like those get overlooked these days but they do still hold up i caught the first one on tv again and i, I really enjoyed it uh, i've exactly seen the those same. movies where i can quote them but i still have fun every time watching yeah them. They're, they're timeless for me absolutely um brownies made out of real bread what was it the, are, you, are your lemons made out of real lemons? Are your brownie? Are your Girl Scout cookies made out of real Girl Scouts? Yes. <laughs> Which that girl ended up being in the second movie later on. That's their rival at the uh, the camp. Huh. They actually got that actress to reprise her role and yeah. this little connection because it's actually supposed to be a day apart from one another. Because mm -hmm. she pulls out the in the first one she pulls out the, the sweater she knitted for the baby it has like three legs. And then right afterwards, it's her going, I'm pregnant. And then they go to the hospital. Hmm. So it's supposed to be like, I think like a couple of days apart. Like she just went through labor that fast. I'm going to be honest. I like Casper better than Adam's family. Really? That's fair. I, that's I, fair. I think that's probably fair too. I, I wouldn't argue. I, I disagree with it, but I could see why. And I'm going to name one more TV series because we are running out of time here. I'm going to throw this TV series out to everybody. Uh, the monsters. Make sure you watch the oh, monsters right the monsters. around. I grew up watching it when I was a kid. Yeah. Not not the movies, but the original. Right. Yeah. And there's actually a really good monsters movie. Uh, it's the only good one of the movies that they did to me is Monsters Go Home, uh, which I recommend. It's when Herman wins money and uh, he they all go on vacation. And it's just one of the funniest things ever because Herman wins the money and he gets so excited he jumps up and down and like the whole house just comes collapsing down. On uh, YouTube, I found like a documentary about the monsters, like really? the making of and everything. I'll send you a link and you put it at the bottom. I, I, the I was wondering there. if there's something like that on the special features because I have the whole series. It's around. like a 45 minute like uh, <laughs> interview with some of the surviving cast members. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, would, uh, I really like check that out. Just send that yeah, no, I'll put, I'll put another put link at the bottom Absolutely. of your video. Absolutely. All right. So we, uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time. This has been a really fun conversation uh, yeah. today. Uh, so be sure, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you guys do want to see more content, you guys have to subscribe. Drop a like below the video. Uh, we are also on Twitter, uh, Anorax Official, and Instagram, pretty much the same thing, comment Anorax too. Official. And yeah, comment. Uh, give us your feedback uh, constructively, please. But you know, <laughs> you have your rights. Uh, official, but, though, huh? Official. Anorax Official. Huh? You got official. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Fit the big time boys. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, and uh, we do have a Facebook page. You can go over there and like that uh, as well. And um, once again, I'm your host, Dom Martino. You can follow me on Twitter at Dom underscore Martino underscore. And uh, would like to thank my uh, two panelists, uh, Josh uh, and Josh Richards and Jareth Love. Um, hopefully, we get Josh back on the show again. Yeah, love and, to be back. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. And uh, we'll get you back on for sure. Um, and <clears throat> Jared's always going to be on, I think, yep. uh, as always. Let's be honest, Jared so, is the show. <laughs> Jared just really makes this show quite a bit. And uh, yeah, so uh, we might um, have some fun, more fun guests on next week. We'll see how that goes. 
Uh, but for now, this has been uh, episode three, the Halloween edition of Anorex on Air. And thanks for joining us, guys. And you all have a good day.